All right, so I have Arlo all revved up back there in the background. He's in full snore mode, so we're gonna have some awesome pug snore interruptions through this video. Um, but let's start with this blues rhythm. That's the first one we're gonna learn. Man, you could, there's so much you could do with this. You can speed it up, slow it down. It's incredibly versatile. Even if you learn nothing else, this rhythm is worth the price of admission. So uh, we're going to be playing this in the key of G, and I'm not going to be using any open chords, down the old cowboy chords down in first position, and I'm doing that intentionally. I want you to learn how to be playing these bar chords. If some people I know struggle with that, but it allows you to easily transpose and play everything we're going to learn in any key that you want, just by moving up or down the neck. That's the reason for it. And so we're going to start with this, uh, this G chord, that's your one chord. And I'm, these three fingers are make, playing the E chord shape. So think of the, your E chord down in first position. If you were to just slide that E chord up and then bar here on the third fret, now your E chord becomes a G chord. So think of your bar as a capo. And actually what I'm doing is I'm starting with a G7 chord. Anytime you want to get it kind of a bluesy feel, go into those dominant seven chords. So take your pinky away from that chord shape and you have this really cool G7 chord. Now I use this chord shape all the time because I can do this hammer on with my middle finger. And that's what we're going to do in this rhythm. And it, just doing that hammer on, it gives it kind of that old ragtime piano feel to me. So we're going to start with this strum pattern. These are all down strokes initially with the right hand. It's the sixth string by itself. And then we're going to strum. And when we strum, you're going to take your middle finger off and hammer it on to the fourth fret third string. So it sounds like this. That's the first thing you're going to do. Now once you've got that down, then uh, we're going to repeat that. So the cadence of this sounds like this. Six, strum, six, strum. So it's six, strum, six, strum. Let's do it again. And that's the, that's the one chord. That's the feel. We've already sort of started to set the cadence of the whole rhythm with that. Now we're going to go to the four chord. And to do that, we're coming down to the C chord. So think of your C chord in first position, the one that you learned uh, initially. And then at, let's turn it into a C7 by adding our pinky to the third fret fourth string. Now we're only going to play the middle four strings, but this is a must know chord shape because you can play this anywhere on the neck. There's no open strings in that. And what I like to do, and what I see a lot of guitar players doing, is you take your ring finger and you go back and forth between the fifth string and the sixth string on that fret. So you go like this. See my ring finger is just bouncing. Sit five, six, five, six. And that allows you to kind of simulate what the bass would be doing. But remember, it starts on the five. That's your root string or your root fret. So then the rhythm pattern for this four chord sounds like this. Let me do that slowly. You have down, down, up. There's your bass note. Down, up, down. Let's do that again. So much can be done with that right there. And you'll start to see that play out in this lesson as we get into some of the other uh, rhythm patterns. Let's back it up from the beginning now and play the one chord and the four chord. So we have one, two, three, four. Now let's go back to the one chord. Now let's go to the five chord. Notice it's the same thing as what we did over the four chord. You just slide everything up two frets. Same strum pattern, everything is the same. The only difference is your left hand moved up two frets. Then back to your one chord. Yeah, that's the whole thing. So there's your blues rhythm. Awesome, awesome rhythm. Try playing that in different tempos. And uh, even with different effects, if you've got an electric guitar, put a little overdrive on it, you'll start to get all kinds of really cool ideas from that. All right, let's move on to the next rhythm. It goes like this. Now, one thing that's easy about this is it's all downstrokes with the right hand. You're not worrying about upstrokes. So that, to keep that in mind, it's all downstrokes. Now, the first thing you, I want you to do is play a G chord, a G major bar chord. And we're going to start by alternating the bass string. So we're going to start with the sixth string and then we're going to go to the fifth string. So we're going to go six, five, six, five. 
with downstroke, so the right hand. Now in between each one, just kind of create a little bit of a percussion by slapping your strings. This is just to get the feel for this. So then we're going to go to the four chord, which is your C chord. Now I'm going to play that using the A chord shape. A chord, and down in first position, slide it up. This is out of caged. I'm going to assume you know that, so that we're playing a C chord here. But the bass notes are going to go like this, five, six, five, six. Now look what's happening there. My index finger is going from the third fret, uh, fifth string, to the third fret, sixth string. So let's back it up and play the bass notes over the one chord now and over the four chord. We're just going to play the bass notes. We're not playing the chords yet. Even though we're making the chord shape, we're just getting the bass part down. So it's one, two, three, four. Back to your one chord. Five chord. Look at the five chord. It's the same thing as the four chord. We just slid it up two frets. You're going to notice that that's the pattern that happens throughout music. And that happens for lead stuff as well. If you like what you're doing over the four chord, you can always move it up two frets and do it over the five chord. Um, but that's the, that's the bass part. Now if you're able to play that, you're almost all the way there. The only thing we're going to do in addition to that is instead of doing the, uh, the slap, we're going to actually play the chord in, in that place. So it's going to sound like this. Now notice one thing when you hear that chord. It's not ringing out. It's not like this. And I'm doing that intentionally. I'm releasing the tension. As I hit it, I keep my fingers in place, but I release the tension. It's called left hand muting. And the reason you do that is it creates a, a, really a, a drum kit sound. You've got your kick, which is your bass, and then you've got your snare, which is the chord. So you've got kick, snare, kick, snare. And so as a rhythm play, guitar player then, you're also filling in where a, a percussionist would be. So you're kind of wearing two hats in that respect. So that's the whole cadence for this, um, for this bluegrass style rhythm. You do it over the four chord, do it over the one chord, same as the five chord. And that becomes, and I'm making it look easy and I realize that when you're just getting into this it's going to feel really clunky and you're going to feel like you can't do it. But just slow it down, start it real slow. And the other thing you can do is you can add in seven chords, just like we did for the blues thing. So instead of playing the C chord like this, I could play the C7. Listen to how this sounds. See how it pulls it into more of a bluesy feel? So now we can start mixing and matching what we learned in the first rhythm. We can take some of those chord shapes, apply it to this. Hopefully light bulbs are going off for some of you. And you realize, wait, if you could do that for the four chord, could you do that seven shape for the five chord? Yes. And the first one, that, you know, that hammer on, you could work that in as well. So it's start to mix and match this stuff. So that's the bluegrass style. Let's move on to that last one. And I'm calling it, I didn't really know what to call it, I'm calling it the folk, dude, the dog. I'm calling it the folk country rhythm, and it's... I just use this stuff all the time. Um, and this is great for those of you that are singer, songwriters, needing a guitar to accompany yourself. This type of rhythm playing. So what I'm doing, playing the same chords, starting with a G chord. So this starts with a downstroke, uh, and we start by playing the bass note. And that's really the only time we're hitting that bass note, is the very first time. And you could be sloppy with this. You could hit the bottom three strings. It doesn't really matter. There's no a right answer for that, but try and be as consistent as you can, whatever you choose. So it's down, and then we're going to hit the chord. That's also a downstroke. So it's down, down. That's the first two downstrokes. Now watch what happens after that. So that goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down. You might want to write that down. If you're a premium member, you'll have the tab with all the notation on how to play those strum patterns, but let me back up and play that slowly one more time. We'll do down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down. 
That last up there, I waited up, up, down. So that's the rhythm style. It sounds pretty simple because it's just ups and downs, but it's the stops that make it. So it's... Here's your four chord. So you can see that pattern, how useful that is. You could play that fast, you could play it slow. There's a lot of uses you can get out of that. All right, so that's what we have for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed these three different rhythm styles. Let me know if you like this style of lesson, of like rhythm strum patterns, so I can do more like this. Uh, but these are three classic ones that I use all the time. And don't be afraid to mix and match them. You can take parts of the blues one and put it in with the bluegrass one. You know, don't worry about the labels. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Anything else you got to say back there on the pillow? I guess not. All right, signing off. There it is. Arlo.